Welcome, I am Terry Tropin, and today I'll be discussing the changes to the ICD-10 PCS codes for 2025. But first, let me start with some information about myself. I have a Master's in Healthcare Administration Informatics from the University of Maryland Global Campus and have RHIA and CCSP certifications. I'm also an AHIMA approved ICD-10 trainer. I'm also the author of some books. So here are my books. And these are available on Amazon and they're updated every year. I'm working on the PCS book for 2025. The changes for uh, the CM book are not out yet. I'm also working on this one. This one will be out in um, the fall. I was an adjunct at Tacoma Park Silver Spring um, College, Montgomery College. My books are available on Amazon and are updated every year, as I said, or as needed, because sometimes there are changes mid-year. So this is what I'm going to talk about um, today. I'll talk about the major changes for 2025. For all the changes, see the link in the description for this video. Changes related to the circulatory system were made to uh, medical and surgical section, the lower artery section, extracorporeal or systemic assistance and performance section, other procedure section, and the new technology section. So no changes were made to the guidelines for ICD-10 PCS. Yay! So you don't have to worry about that. So I would suggest you get out your current ICD-10 PCS book for 2024 and follow along because I'm going to list the specific tables and then you can see how they have changed from this year, how they will change for next year. So let's start with the medical and surgical section zero, bypass procedure, and the body system is lower arteries. And this is table 041, medical and surgical section. So the second row was revised to include a new qualifier, lower artery. So this is lower arteries, bypass. So a new qualifier value for lower arteries. So before, all you could see, all you had was renal arteries. Now, these. Now you have a qualifier value for lower arteries. Arteries below the renal artery. Now table 047, uh, also in the lower arteries section, has changed a lot. This is for dilation, root operation dilation. This has changed a lot. You'll see that, it's kind of hard to see because there's so many things on here. These have been crossed out. Um, K through U have been crossed out from this first row. And these are moved to separate new rows. So all of these are crossed out of that first row and moved. That's why I suggested you look at um, your 2024 book so you can see what the changes are made. So this is a big change. So in the second row of 047 is a new row. All those things, so body parts deleted from row one were placed in new separate rows two through eight. These rows have a different uh, approach and devices. You'll see these have um, new devices, drug eluding two devices, three devices, four or more devices, and then inter. inter intraluminal device two, three, or four, meaning non-drug eluting. In row one, there's only either drug eluting or not drug eluting, meaning there's not two, three, four, or more. It's just either it's drug eluting or it's not. So that's a big change. You have numbers of devices for these ones that were diluted, that were um, deleted from before. Okay, so what does that mean? So lower arteries, lower arteries bypass still. So devices are intraluminal devices, drug eluting or not drug eluting. Now the drug eluting device may be a stent or maybe a balloon. 
and dragolutin is two to four, non-dragolutin also two to four or more. So you see that it has a coating on it. There's the artery, the plaque, you have a balloon that blows up uh, and expands the stent or you just have a stent. So that's what that looks like. So still on table 047, dilation, lower arteries. New rows three and four, also use the deleted body parts from that first row. Note the approach values three percutaneous is not used here. So we have this part is new. And then it uses this row has drug eluting, intraluminal, no device. So that take doesn't have the um, numbers. This row does have those numbers. And this row has drug coated balloon and this one does not. So a lot of changes, so be really careful to um, check those out because it's different. So it takes some getting used to. So rows five and six introduce a new qualifier, sustained release, meaning the, you can see this qualifier, sustained release in these two rows. Again, using those deleted values. So sustained release means the drug eluting device releases the drug over time and that's to maintain a steady level of the drug in the body. These rows use only percutaneous approach. So when you look at these, you need to make sure got the right approach, the right device, does it have a number of device, and the qualifiers are different. So these are really tricky. This 047, 047. Okay, so that's all the 047 changes. So let's move out of the medical and surgical section to table 5A0, extracorporeal or systemic assistance and performance. So the fifth row is added to this table, extracorporeal or systemic assessments and performance, physiological systems assistance, okay? They've added a new duration value, intraoperative. This is used for venous filtration during a procedure, during a thrombectomy. So here's what we've got during percutaneous thrombectomy procedure. So access from either the, femor from the uh, femoral down here or the jugular vein. And so they take the blood out, they filter it, and they put it back in. So blood and debris are removed, filtered, and returned to the patient. So of course this is intraoperative, so it's reported in addition to the thrombectomy procedure. So let's go on to table 8E0, other procedures. Um, this is a new method value, fiber optic 3D guided procedure. So this is other procedures, physiological systems and anatomical regions, other procedures. And you see that this is a circulatory system and they removed external from this one and moved it to its own separate area, separate row and added fiber optic guided. So what is this? Well, this is fiber optic 3D guided procedure is performed during endovascular procedures such as aortic repair to provide real time 3D visualization. So while they're doing the endo endovascular procedures, they can visualize, the physician can see where the guideline is, the guide wire is going while it's being moved to the side of the procedure. So again, this would be reported along with the endo, endovascular procedure. So you have, would be reporting two procedures. So this is really important because you don't want to miss reporting this procedure in addition to the endovascular one. Okay, so now we're going into new technology. As happens every year, there are a lot of changes to the new technology procedures, tables. So this um, got new qualifier value, intraluminal device, evolimus, eluding resorbable scaffolds. 
So this is the first change. This is in dilation. The body part value is arteries in the leg. Now note also that the qualifier values for 2025 is A for new technology group 10. So um, this is new device, interluminal device, everalimus, eluding resorbable scaffold. This is what it looks like. This is a balloon expandable scaffold used for improving luminal di diameter in patients with chronic limb threatening ischemia. So also in new technology, but this was in division. Intraluminal bioprosthetic valve leaflet splitting technology in existing valve. This is for the aortic valve body part. So this uses a catheter to split a pre-existing bias prosthetic valve, aortic valve implant. So there's already been an aortic valve implant, but it has failed. So now they're going to in, they split it. So this is a division, just cut it into a body part. This is what they're doing here. And this is where the aortic valve is located. Now this device has not yet been approved by the Food and Drug Administration. This was at the time these were posted. They're expecting it to be approved, and it may be approved by the time you listen to this um, video, so check on that to make sure that it's, it's been approved by the time you are reporting it. Okay, so this X2R, so new technology, this is a replacement procedure. This is for upper extremity arteries, and this new device is bioengineered human acellular vessel. So what is this? Well, this, this is really interesting. I, this, is fast, this stuff is fascinating to me. This is an infection-resistant, universally implantable, meaning you don't have to match it up, um, conduit for use in vascular repair. So it's a uh, bioengineered vessel to use to repair a blood vessel that you don't have to match. This has not yet been approved by the Food and Drug Administration at the time this device, was, this, um, these new codes were posted. So also in X2R replacement, uh, tricuspid valve, here's a new device. Multiplane flex technology bioprosthetic valve. So what's this? Well, this is a multiplane flex technology bioprosthetic valve, a device consisting of a tri-leaflet bovine, meaning cow, pericardial tissue valve with a catheter-based delivery system. So this is what it looks like. A new kind of um, valve that can be used. This device has been approved by the FDA. Okay, so now let's look also in the cardiovascular system, new technology restriction. This is for the descending thoracic aorta and the abdominal aorta. This is branched interluminal device, manufactured integrated system for or more arteries. Seems like the device values get longer and longer each year. Okay, so what is this? This is a device to treat thoraco, thoraco abdominal aorta aneurysms and pararenal aortic, aortic aneurysms. It's used to restrict four or more arteries. So the one on the left is the device. This one is the device. And it's an endoprosthetic prosthesis is placed using guide wires and a catheter rather than open approach. And this has been approved. So let's look at, um, Or abdominal and pararenal is here. So this is the aorta. So this shows you where these are placed. Okay, XW0. Um, this is introduction. And this is paclitaxel coated balloon technology. And this is one balloon, two balloons, three balloon, balloons, four or more. And this is the coronary artery. And this also 
um, this, these are, this table already existed, X, W, zero, um, one artery, two arteries, three arteries. So the body part values has numbers and the device substance technology part also has numbers. So what is this? This is a coded balloon catheter technology used for mechanical dilation of the coronary lesions to maintain vessel patency, to keep the vessel open. And this has been approved by the Food and Drug Administration. Okay, let's move on to new technology, physiological systems monitoring. And the new device is blood flow adhesive ultrasound patch technology. So this is a wireless wearable device used to monitor, monitor IV fluid administration, ensuring fluids are only given when beneficial changes in cardiac output or stroke volume are observed. See this right here? That's what we're talking about. So it's wireless wearable. This has not yet been approved. Fascinating, really interesting stuff. Okay, XXA. New technology, physiological systems assistance. And this is filtration, blood pathogens. So this is an extracorporeal pathogen removal device that can capture pathogens and remove them from systemic circulation to help patients recover from systemic from septic shock. This has not yet been approved. So you see it takes it out, filters it, puts it back in. So it's filtering pathogens um, from the blood and putting it back into the body. Okay, also in new technology, physiological systems, measurement. So we have infection, phenotypical, fully automated, rapid susceptibility technology with controlled inoculum. Okay, so uh, this is a controlled inoculum is used to test for positive gram negative organisms in the butt, excuse me, in the bloodstream. This has not yet been approved. So what's an inoculum? An inoculum is the substance being inoculated. Now why they don't just say that, I don't know, but that's what inoculum means. So they inoculate something to test for positive uh, gram, ne gram negative organisms and they put in, put this in this box and they can find out whether it's, um, it, it, it's faster than other tests. That's why they use, use this one. Okay, so new technology, physiological systems, measurement. So here's another one, infection, positive blood culture, small mo molecule sensor array technology. So a small, this is used to test quantitative, meaning the, uh, the amount, antimicrobial susceptibility of organisms directly from a positive blood culture. It is aimed at diagnosis of sepsis and antibiotic resistance bacteria. This has not yet been approved. So here's your positive blood culture, diluted, inoculate. And so it's like, you see, this is the important part quick. Okay, so that's the video. If you'd like a copy of the slides, send me a note with your email address. I'll send you a PDF of the slides. I'm going to be posting a video of the other non-circulatory changes, um, hopefully today, if not the next couple of days. Here, is, here are the books that I have written. Here's the way to contact me with questions. Here's where to contact me for a copy of the slides. Here are the books I've written, and as I said, they will be updated as I get the information. They're updated every year or as needed. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this was helpful. Thank you.